What's up, everybody? It's Eddie Z here from Easy Trading Computers, and you're watching Trading Computer Secrets. Let's determine if your computer is fast enough to trade with. Is your computer fast enough to trade with? So the most important variable in determining if your computer is fast enough to trade with is your computer's processor, which is also known as a CPU, or the CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. So your processor, your CPU, they, they mean the same thing. Your processor, it was, it's, was, it is what takes in that giant fire hose, that giant stream of data, turns it into charts, graphs, and indicators in real time. It's the engine of the computer. So to figure out this formula of what makes a lightning fast trading computer, the most important variable in that formula is the processor. Again, the processor is the engine of the, of the computer. So what you need to do is you need to find out what processor you have and exactly what processor is in your current machine. By the way, I'm gonna walk you through a demo. So I'm gonna pull up Google here and uh, you guys should see my screen. So here's what we're gonna do. So if you're in Windows 10, what you wanna do is click the start button and just, just click it till it opens and start typing. You're gonna type the words system information. Then you're gonna click on the right up here, system information. And this is gonna open this box right on your computer. Now, if you are still using Windows 7, it's a little bit different. You'll just click the start button and right above the start button, there's a little search box and you'll type in this exact same thing, system information. And then you'll see it populate above, above the search box and just click on it. It should open this exact same window. So this uh, is built into Windows and what it is showing is all of your hardware, everything that's, and even your software that's built into your system. Now, I'm gonna warn you ahead of time, I'm, I am using a, an older machine I have here that I just use for webinars. It's not my, my main trading computer. Uh, just, giving that, uh, just giving that information right now. So the main thing we wanna look for, so right here, this is the top line. Our OS is Microsoft Windows 10. We wanna come down to about the 10th line where it says processor right here. Intel Core i7-4790K at four gigahertz. That is my processor. What you wanna do is jot that down. You wanna jot down your processor. Make sure you get all the numbers and letters. So I have the i7-4790K. So that whole, that whole i7-4790K, all those numbers and letters are really important. You might have, yours might say, advanced micro devices or AMD. It might say Intel, Xeon. There's a number of things it might say besides the numbers and letters. So just jot that down for now. The next thing you wanna do is just go down to probably about line 25, right under time zone, installed physical memory. So for me, I have 16 gigabytes of memory. Jot that down just so you have it handy. So hopefully uh, everybody's got that. So the next thing we wanna know, I'm gonna close this window out. The next thing we wanna know is, okay, how do we know if this processor is fast enough for trading? It's the engine of the computer. And so think of it, I like the analogy of a, of a car engine. So the faster a car is, the more horsepower the car has. The more horsepower a car is in general, the faster the car is. So we wanna go and look at how much horsepower our processors have. And the best place to do that is to go to a website called cpubenchmark.net. cpubenchmark, I didn't even spell it right, .net. So there it is up there. Before I click on it, I will let you write that down, cpubenchmark.net. So go ahead and load up this page. Now what this website is, this is an independent company that's developed something called benchmark software. And people from all over the world have already downloaded and run this software on their computer. 
Essentially, what the software does is force the computer to run a whole series of formulas and algorithms, force the computer to come up with the solutions, and measure how fast it can come up with these solutions. The nice part about this site is that we don't actually have to run the software because over a million people have already run their tests with all these different processors. And so we can just look at their database and see what our, what's called our benchmark score is. And the benchmark score essentially is your, how much horsepower you have. So what I'd like you to do is just scroll down here where it says search for your CPU model. I'm gonna go ahead and click that and it will load this page here and you can start typing in your processor. Now I have the i7, 4790K. Uh, you could put in the world, word Intel before that because you can see down here these are all listed with AMD in front of it. So there's AMD and Intel are, the, are what you're going to see. That's like 99% of them. So then I'm going to click find CPU. So I go ahead and click find CPU. Here's my processor. And by the way, it's very important. So you notice my processor right here, i7-4790K. Notice there's another processor called the i7-4790 with no K. It's, it's a very important distinction because the benchmark score for the K is 8,097. The benchmark score without the K is 7,200. The higher the number, the faster the processor. Now here's the deal, that, that number probably doesn't mean anything to you right now. I'm gonna tell you what it means. The minimum benchmark score for trading is 25,000. So this machine that I'm using is way underpowered and not fast enough for trading. So my, and, and the, the most important thing I want you to realize is that the lower the number, the higher your risk of slippage or creating a bottleneck inside your machine that makes your, uh, your charts and your indicators like a little bit stale. So the, the lower the number, the, the slower that machine is and the higher the risk you're at. So the minimum benchmark score for trading again is 25,000 and the higher the number, the better you are gonna be. The farther above 25,000 you are, the longer the useful life of the machine will be. Uh, we, I mean, there are actually some processors now that benchmark over 50,000. This, this is a brand new thing. This just came out in the last couple months. Uh, some really high-end processors that benchmark over 50,000. Those machines should be good for, for five years, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully five years. Three to, let's call it three to five years. I mean, you guys know how fast they, they put this technology on us. I mean, the phone, the useful life of your cell phone these, these days is, I mean, barely a year, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Now, the next most important variable in this formula, so the most heavily weighted variable in the formula for what makes a fast trading computer is the processor. The next most heavily weighted formula uh, is your internet speed. So now we're going to go to a different website, which is called speedtest, one word, dot net, speedtest.net. So just go ahead and load that site. Now I have an ad, ad blocking software running. Sometimes this page can be loaded up with all kinds of advertising. Just ignore all of that. So we're going to run this speed test. going to give us three data points that we want to pay attention to. So I'm just going to go ahead and click go. That's, that's what we want. And before I do that, you can see uh, I'm using AT&T. So I have AT&T fiber here. And it looks like it wants to connect to our nearest major node uh, or closest large transfer, transfer switch server. That's like my first point of contact. So I'm gonna click go, and it's gonna give us three data points. The first data point is gonna, it's gonna give us is this thing called the ping or the reaction time. Now the ping is your modem sending a signal to your closest major node or your closest major, uh, major transfer uh, point like the larger the closest major server and getting an echo back and we want that ping to be less than 50 milliseconds think of when you make a phone call 
The ping is how fast someone on the other end answers the phone and says hello. So it's not actually having the conversation back and forth. It's just that first point of contact. So we want to see this below 50. We'll get rid of this. This, this number here, ping, below 50 milliseconds. Anything above 50 milliseconds is going to create some latency, is going to create a delay, is going to create a problem while trading. The next most important figure is your download speed. Now, my download speed is 907 megabits per second, which is darn good considering I pay for a, a gig uh, of download speed. That's about right. The minimum download speed as a trader is 25 megabits per second. Now, this really is the minimum. Don't cheap out. If you can get a gig and it costs you an extra 50 or 100 bucks a month, please get it. Please get it. It can make a huge difference in, in reducing any bottleneck or any latency. Uh, I see folks, they don't want to pay to jump from 25 megabits per second to 100 megabits per second because it costs them $34.99 a month. That's ridiculous. We're traders. This is a profession. You want to have the best tools you possibly can. When it comes to upload speed, the minimum upload speed, so the download speed is how fast, obviously, that you can take in information. The upload speed is how fast you can send out information. For example, your orders. The minimum upload speed is really only five megabits per second. In our case, it's 941 megabits per second. Again, higher is always better. Higher is always better. So th those are the two biggest components when it comes to your trading computer. Those are the biggest one. There are other aspects to that formula as well, but those are the two most um, heavily weighted aspects. So just to go over, here's like a, a, a checklist for you of what you need. You need your benchmark score to be 25,000 or higher. The higher, the better. Anything under this, you're going to run into uh, that issue we call slippage, which is can cost you a lot of money, will frustrate the crap out of you. The sec second most important thing is the internet speed. Again, we want that ping to be less than 50 milliseconds. We want our download greater than 25 megabits per second. And look, I, re I recognize that um, folks all over the country have different have, have access to different speeds. We want at least 25 megabits per second. If you can get a gig like I have, please get it. And then upload speed, we want a minimum of five megabits per second. Now RAM, RAM is your random access memory. And we want a minimum of 16 gigabytes or more, preferably. Now, uh, if you're a trader like me, this, 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 this aspect did not used to be so heavily weighted for me. But as time has gone on, the computers have gotten more robust. The, the software has become more robust. So our, if you are running, for example, Think or Swim or Tastyworks or TradeStation or Ninja Trader, I have clients who are running three, four different trading applications at the same time. The more things you are running at the same time, the more RAM you need. And I've noticed as time has gone on, we're opening more and more programs at the same time. If you're running Zoom, that can be pretty RAM intensive. So if you're running Zoom in a trading room or you're running GoToWebinar or any of these other uh, resource hogs, plus you're running two other trading applications, it's going to use up a lot of RAM. So you want to make sure you have enough RAM. If you use up all of the RAM that's in your system, your computer is going to start writing that data to the hard drive and your whole machine is going to bog down. And that's a huge issue. So 16 gigs is minimum. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and download our complete guide to trading computers by clicking the link below. This guide is jam packed with great tips so you can totally optimize your trading experience. My name's Eddie Z, and I'll see you in the very next video.